All right. So I think this, uh, if we go, if we go back to that, this is the one piece of humor that I have besides uh, some conversation that we'll weave in. And and if we look at prior authorization processes today, um, this is our take on the path to authorization. And on the left hand side, you'll see the physicians. And they're just trying to get a medical review done and they're trying to go through authorization processing and they have no idea what's covered. They have no idea if it requires a prior authorization. They have no idea if it's a benefit. And they have this little carrier pigeon over here with the army helmet on and he's gonna carry all of that information over to the payer. And we have the payers on the other side that are doing the same medical review, have the same carrier pigeon going back and forth and the same process. And on the outside, we have the patients just sitting there going, what is going on in this healthcare conversation? How do I get the care that I need? Can I get it done? Is it appropriate? All of those things that happen. So what Sean and I are gonna talk about today is really how do we automate this authorization process using clinical data, uh, clinical reviews inside of the Jiva system with Interqual Connect. So I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, Craig Kneer, I'm the Director of Product Management over our platform and application services. I've been with McKesson going on well, over 20 years, I, I won't say how long, let's just say two decades. I, I've worked in our practice side with our physicians, I've worked on our payer side, I've worked in our relay health side. So I really cover the gamut of, of what happens in the healthcare system. And we have Sean Dunham. Hey everybody, my name is Sean Dunham. I've been with McKesson for 15 years, so unfortunately not as long as Craig. Uh, but uh, I started in support and then moved into product management and now I'm managing the alliance partners and how everybody works together with the review manager and Interqual Connect products. Perfect, thank you, Sean. So when we talk about utilization management, I think everybody recognizes with this thing we call the triple aim goals, right? Improving the health of the population. How do we make sure our patients are getting better quicker? How do we make sure that the, the population of the patients that we serve and the members that we serve uh, aren't in that 3% from this chronic condition? How do we improve the patient experience? How do we make sure that the providers are getting the right patient experience for them the population that they're serving because we remember members are also patients and patients are also members. We can't just treat them the same anymore. And most importantly is how do we reduce the cost of healthcare? Um, in 2020, I think, one out of every five or six dollars is gonna be spent in healthcare. That number continue to rise as we think about what's happening in the healthcare space. And utilization management is really not living up to that uh, potential. If we think about inappropriate care, 22.5% of our uh, defibrillators aren't evidence-based. We are giving patients machinery that they don't need. Uh, one, of, one out of every three knee replacements is not necessary. 70% of the referrals for spinal fusion, not necessary. So we're doing things to our patients that aren't required. And then there's this slow adoption to clinical evidence. About 50% of the Medicare beneficiaries um, uh, did something to the patient, did a test that was contradictory to the evidence. What that means is we're not using that evidence-based guideline to do uh, what is right for the patients. And we have these unexplained variances in care. And I'll bring a slide up a little bit later. Uh, the difference between Florida and Maine. Look at that number. We have 9.2 versus 127. That means uh, we saw the outliers from Dr. Silverstein who's in the red, who's in the green, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Um, and then uh, from bariatric surgery, four in San Francisco, 80 in Michigan. Something's happening from this physician process. And then the complexity. You know, 141 million Americans have greater than one condition. I have COPD, I have diabetes. 40% of the patients with heart failure have five or more chronic conditions. Sickest of the sick. Um, and then 29% of our uh, patients will have a comorbid mental health issue. So how do we use the evidence? How do we use this clinical decision support process to go through uh, and make sure what's happening is appropriate? And then every year we're adding about 3.5 million people to that Medicare population. We call it the silver swarm, right? Uh, all of these people are getting older and older and that population is the hardest to serve. So, um, this is a quote that we have from one of the physicians. He says, let's face it, neurosurgeons do far too much spine surgery. 
most challenging aspect is the unnecessary discussion. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what's unnecessary may be necessary to others. We have to learn what to do uh, and stay tuned. So even the physicians are recognizing that some of this evidence that they're working on isn't clinically appropriate for the patient. So how do we change this conversation? Uh, providers are confused and frustrated. Let's think about what physicians want to do. Physicians want to care for the patient and provide the care. And we're putting this hurdle in their way. Uh, about the provider costs, about 31 billion is just spent on payer administration. They didn't sign up for that in medical school. They don't get trained for that in medical school. They get trained to provide care. 25% uh, of the hospital budget is spent on billing and administration, not directly on patient care. Uh, for a physician, about $68,000 a year. Uh, and then 78% of the physicians say that eliminating the prior authorization hassle is important. Not eliminating prior authorization. They recognize the value of that but make it easier for the process to be done. So it's less about the hurdle and more about making it simple. And if we look at the time spent in this payer interaction for our providers, um, we're spending about, um, let's see, 36 hours a week in something other than patient care. So how do we make sure as a payer we're interacting well with our providers and doing what's right for the patient and the provider and the member? Uh, this is our, what we believe the prior authorization process is. Today, hospitals, providers do the medical review. They want to do what's clinically appropriate, and they do a prior authorization request. They don't know what's covered or not covered, so we're burning up the fax machines, right? We're just sending all of this information over. And then somewhere in the middle, it's phone, fax, email. Um, I think one of the plans we're working with, they have 2% provider adoption of their portal. 98% is phone and fax. If I had to sit behind a fax machine and just move paper like that, that would be a really long day and I would not be a happy employee. Uh, and then on the payer side, we have, what do you guys do on the payer side? You do exactly the same thing. You run a clinical review, you do the authorization determination. What happens on the outside is we have delays for patient care. You want to talk about getting those patients the right care at the right time, how do we uh, remove some of this administrative burden? And somewhere, uh, between $35 and $100 is spent just on UM, not directly related to patient care. That cost does not include appeals, denials, grievances, and all of the stuff that happens after that if something was considered inappropriate. And that is just to ask. Uh, we did something with CAQH. There's a, the transaction fee is $22 just for an EDI transaction of a prior authorization. That's, that's ridiculous, like claims are like 17 cents or something like that. Why are prior authorizations so expensive? So we're talking about this new approach, and it's really around increasing the automation, simplifying the whole process. So the first thing we do is get that medical review up front, make sure what we're doing is appropriate, and we know, is it covered, is it appropriate, and do I require prior authorization? Increasing that automation. And then do the proactive medical review. Getting that medical review at the point in time the provider is making that decision. Integrated into their care management system, the Epic, the Cerner, the Midas, the Allscripts, where the providers are doing these things. I love that dashboard, by the way. Mm -hmm. That was really cool, um, having that provider interaction right there. Making sure in the payer's utilization management system, you're also getting that care management integration. That's where we really came up to the, to the Z Omega and the Jiva people and said, how do we make this provider and payer conversation more collaborative. And then lastly, manage the exceptions. If I was a utilization management coordinator in a payer system, and all I did was rubber stamp prior authorizations, again, it's like the nurse on the other side just doing this work, right? We have to figure out how do we allow ourselves to manage the exceptions so that we're working on the very complex cases, the ones that are driving our cost. So it's really around realizing the potential of UM. We call it the measure, manage, refine process. So as we go through this process, it's collecting the data, the evidence, evaluating the variances of the patient, provider, product, and plan. Once we start to collect the data, we can manage those exceptions. And I pick on Christine Dunleavy, our AVP of uh, business relationship over here. Um, we'll call her one of those really, really bad providers that she's in the red. 
So how do I manage those providers to make sure that when they are providing the care, I have this utilization management hurdle up in front of Christine. Anytime she asks for something, she gets the red light, right? Because she doesn't do things that are clinically, I'm sorry, Christine. She doesn't do things that are clinically appropriate. She doesn't provide the best care. She's that redliner. Giving me the data to manage that process is important. So upfront instead of claims. Claims is way too late to start managing provider performance. You need to move it up in that UM conversation. And once you start to collect that data, and once you start to manage that data, you can refine that data. So tomorrow we go and have a conversation with Christine and say, based on your peer-to-peer -peer interactions, your performance is improving. I'm gonna take down that hurdle. I'm still gonna ask for that medical review and authorization, but I'm not gonna red card you anymore. But I'm not gonna gold card you either. I wanna make sure what you're doing is clinically appropriate. It allows you to go out to your providers, to your contracted systems and say, we have this data, here's how you're performing compared to everybody else. It makes contracting a data-based decision, not a feeling-based decision. And you just rinse and repeat every single time and you're doing this upfront instead of claims related. Does that make sense to everybody? That's really where we see UM going and what we're doing is we're working with the Z Omega team to really change that and our interqual solution suite uh, with the evidence, our technology and our capabilities are gonna bring that forward and with that I'm gonna bring Sean on. Thank you. Absolutely. Hoping being up here with Craig I won't be used in one of his clinical examples. So. <laughs> So let me talk about the interqual content, about the, how do we deliver that information to you. So the content is clinical, intellectual clinical decision support is, that's for both the payers and the providers. And we use that using evidence-based content. And how do we deliver that content? Well, first we have Review Manager, 4,100 providers throughout the country. And now we have Interqual Connect, which allows you to use that common clinical language to deliver it both to the payers and the providers. So let me talk about the portfolio. So the, we've got the content, the criteria, and then we have the technology that delivers that information. We have the level of care content that's facility-based, so that you're, you're post-acute for your hospitals. We have the care planning, which are your providers' pre-certifications. We have the behavioral health, including substance abuse disorders, the opioid, opioid challenges. I mean, there's epidemics throughout the country right now, very scary. And then we also have Interqual Coordinated Care content. Uh, you might not be familiar with it. It's an assessment-based content where you're able to build out your barriers, your interventions, and your goals. So you build those care plans and take care of the members using that care plan. And in order to deliver that information, you need technology. So we have some technology solutions. We have our Interqual Mobile. We also have the Review Manager and Interqual Connect like we talked about. And there's also an Interqual content customization tool. So it allows you to take this content over here on the left and you're actually able to either modify it, you can build your own content, and that can be delivered to both the payers and providers so you can make the changes and then put them in both places. And that tool can modify any of the content over to the left. So you could have a team that is based on using that tool not only do the interqual criteria, the level of care, the care planning, behavioral health, but also build those assessments using the same tool. And it's a really neat tool. It looks a lot like decision trees, like a Visio project where you're able to take blocks and build those questions and build out those goals. Here's the interqual hospital footprint. And as you can see, there's some places where 100%, like Alabama, 87% um, in Louisiana, big percentage here in Texas. Um, and just gives you a good feel for where we are throughout the country. Again, 3,700 hospitals uh, using the product, and that's bigger than any other competitor. So how do we integrate here with Z Omega? Well, we use the Interqual Connect product to connect not only to the Jiva course platform, but also the Jiva portal. And we integrate that with the business rules. So you take the information, and then you use the business rules to deliver it. And this is where we're going with the new UM model, the new utilization management model. You wanna be able to take the information and have it you know, not hit those walls like Craig was showing where you're doing the medical review in one place and medical review in another place. Take the medical review, handle it, and then send it over using automation. So we've got the business rules that can get that automation and then it's going to build that new workflow that you're going to be used, which is that managing the exceptions. 
So take the information, get it. You can get the information, like I said, connect through the, either the portal or through the Jiva Core platform, and then use those business rules to really automate the process. So how do you automate? Well, like Craig said, you take the medical review that you were doing in two places and you do it in one place. You do it over on the provider side. That allows you to give the power to those clinicians with the review and send it over to the payers and not have to duplicate the work on the other side. So that's what's happening right now. And you remember that illustration, you've got, you've got the pigeon on one side with the helmet, pigeon on the other side of the helmet, they're crashing into each other doing the same thing. You remove the duplicative medical review by sending it over with an authorization request. So they're tied together, sent over from the provider to the payer, and then that makes uh, the automated piece flow. So you're not only sending it through automation, but then when you're going to get to the next piece, which is the new workflow, you're gonna manage the exceptions. And that's what your staff's gonna be doing now on the payer side, bigger and more prevalent than you did where you had to not only get the medical review over, but all of a sudden get, get it faxed over, get it called in, and then recreate the same process on the other side. So this is that new UM process, take the exceptions, manage them, you still need to manage those big exceptions, but take the ones that you know, you feel like you can automate, like Craig was saying, gold card, either, and, and just look at those automated reviews and bring them over and not have to change them again or recreate them on the other side. And that'll reduce your administrative burden. So how do we connect it? Again, two places with Jiva. We've got the provider portal. So over here at the bottom, people that don't need to get into the main core platform, they don't need Interqual, put them through the Jiva portal. They'll be able to use the Interqual criteria create the reviews and send them over to the payers. The people that are at the hospital and do use uh, the platform, you can send that information over directly. And again, you're sending the medical review tied in with the authorization so that you're not having to recreate it on the other side. So does that make sense? So we get two places. Again, people who don't need the core platform go right to the portal and start working on that piece. And this will allow you to move away from that rubber stamp too, right? Because you're, you don't want to recreate that medical review on the other side because it makes no sense. You've already done it on the provider side. So again, the big keys, and I want to make sure I mention the other, another really important piece about the IT infrastructure. So reduce the administrative costs. You don't have to redo the work on the other side. Move into that new UM workflow where you're not uh, redoing the review, you're managing the exceptions now, a lot clearer. You're also reducing the footprint of the software, but you're, first you're leveraging the Interqual footprint, right, the 3,700 hospitals throughout the area, but you're reducing your administrative footprint, your, in, your IT structure footprint, because this is all hosted by McKesson. So the software is hosted by McKesson now. When we, we make changes, it's not going to impact the partner's roadmaps. So Z Omega has more time to do the great things that they want to do. We do all the changes on our side, and you can get to the content a lot quicker. You're not waiting for another software version so that you can get up to the new content. You're able to quickly adapt to the new content uh, when you want to. And of course, you're going to improve that provider uh, and payer relation because you are, again, you're strengthening that clinical decision on the provider side and then allowing them to make that decision and not re redoing the same work on the other side is gonna make them a lot happier and also reduce your burden. And then again, lead to that new workflow that you wanna do. Manage the exceptions and stay away from having to duplicate the medical review. So it's time to impact your workflow and in order to Im impact that workflow, change your processing, use Interqual Connect with Jiva so that you can move to that new UM workflow.